listening, go to the big room on the east side of this building and take the metal staircase all the way up. And hurry. Who I am doesn't matter, smooth skin. Stop wasting time and get up here. Get moving. All right, smooth skin. I'm letting you in. You better watch yourself. I'll sure as hell be watching you. God, but are you ugly. Get upstairs and talk to Jason before I throw up just from looking at you. Your pranks won't work on me, smooth skin. They won't work on Jason either. Stop wasting my time, smooth skin. Go waste Jason's. Hello, Wanderer. Please forgive us our humble surroundings. Our true home awaits us in the far beyond. Have you come to help us complete the great journey? And they've been shooting them down like animals, haven't they? Those ghouls were members of my flock, even after the madness consumed their minds. We never let them wander free. We kept them safe on the first floor. We kept them contained. The demons must have let them out, somehow. And now they are lost forever, denied the salvation and healing glow of the far beyond. Please, Wanderer, bear in mind that every feral ghoul you spare now is one that we can save later. Once the way is clear, our feral brothers and sisters will accompany us on the great journey. If there are any left. The demons appeared from nowhere. Except it might be more accurate to say they never actually appeared at all. The demons are invisible. Where one of them stands, the most one sees is the air shimmering, like sunlight on water. They set upon us as we were on our way to worship one morning. We had just entered the basement. My flock fought bravely and killed a few, but at such cost. Nearly half of us died or went missing. The rest of us retreated up here. One of the demons raved at us, but they have not tried to attack us since. Still, their demonic presence brought all progress towards the great journey to a standstill. But now you have come. Once again, the Creator has sent a human to help us across a seemingly insurmountable obstacle. Yes, over the intercom. Threats of death should be stepped outside. Guarantees of safety should we stay locked away. It went on for hours and did not always make sense. But that was the first day only. Since then, silence. Will you drive away the demons, Wanderer? Praise the Creator. Bless you, Wanderer. Bless us all. As soon as the underground has been rid of demons, Preparations for the great journey can resume. We wish to escape the barbarity of the wasteland, especially the violence and bigotry of its human inhabitants. The Creator has promised to my flock a new land, a place of safety and healing, a paradise in the far beyond. Preparations for the great journey were nearly complete when the demons appeared. I am Jason Bright, the prophet of the great journey. All the ghouls you see here are members of my flock. An auspicious name, don't you think? It was mine before I became as I am now, before the great war even. Truly does the Creator author a destiny for each and every one of us. The means by which the great journey is to be accomplished are an article of faith, not to be discussed with outsiders. I have glimpsed it only in visions, Wanderer, but what I have seen is truly miraculous. It is a place of light and healing, and I know in my soul that my flock will be safe there. You're referring to Chris. I doubt you had much luck if you tried telling him that he's human. We had the same discussions when he first appeared, and the same lack of success. He believes he is one of us, 
Soon enough we realized that Chris was a gift from the Creator. He is integral to the success of the Great Journey. Let me know when the Underground has been rid of the demons. What's that, Antler? We have a visitor. An assassin, more like. I say kill it, Antler, for safe sake. Hmm? Okay, Antler, I'll ask. Uh, hi, human. Why you come here? Who is Antler? Who is Antler? Antler, the human asks about you. What do I tell it? All right. All right. Yes, yes, of course. Who Antler is not important to you. Antler wants that you deal with me. Me? I am devoted to Antler. But before Antler? Hmm. Captain once. Last name Davison. First name... Don't remember. I commanded a troop of Nikon, the Master's elite. A great honor. Very proud. Something happened. We wandered the desert. Life without Master was... hard. The other's minds going strange, going crazy. But then, I found us new master. I found us Antler. Since then, everything's been going really well. A human who is friend to ghouls? Suspicious. You meet the ones upstairs. Antler used intercom, told them stay put. But they want to come down in basement anyways. I cannot allow. My kin are not right in head like I am. They attack you on sight. Ghouls, too. They crazy. Your ghoul friends have to wait until you find what Antler brought us to get. Cut it out, human. Serious final warning. I am in command of my faculties, in command of my troops. Antler guides me in all things, as I in turn guide my kin. No, Antler says you are solution. Plus, can't have you skulking around making trouble. Do as Antler says, or feel his horns. Up to you. Good. Antler brought us here for a reason. Why was that, Antler? Right. A, a piece of paper. Shipment invoice. Hundreds of stealth boys sent here a, a long time ago. But stealth boys must be in the one room. One we don't search yet. The one we can't search. A ghoul, but not squishy like others. This ghoul is tough. I thought Antler said, send my kin into that room, but three died. Ghoul is a crack shot, and set traps too. After I realized, I heard Antler wrong, so I locked the door to keep kin out and wait for Antler to tell me what to do. Then, you come along. Antler says you are solution. Yes, Antler says we leave here as soon as we get stealth boys. Let me give you key. Antler had me lock the door. The ghoul inside, not expecting a human. Maybe he don't shoot you. Maybe he will. Come and get it, you big dumb. Hey, you're not one of those things out there. Who the hell are you? And I bet he told you it's the creator's will for you to risk your ass instead of him, right? Well, good luck with that. I'd give you a hand, but no thanks. I may look like a corpse, but I'm partial to living. First off, I'm not trapped. This was a tactical choice, all right? I'm no match for those things out there. So I found a good defensive position, and I've been defending it, right? Oh, who am I fooling? I'm trapped. Name's Harlan. Pleased to meet you. What happened was, I was escorting folks down to work when those things attacked us. Most of the fight was upstairs, but some folks panicked and made for the basement, and I went after them. Well, turns out there were even more of those bastards down here than upstairs, and things went to shit fast. I couldn't find the others, 
So I fell back to this room, set up a nice little kill zone, and a story. Guess the outfit gives that away, huh? I never did buy into that religious mumbo jumbo with the robes and all that shit. It gets lonely out in the wastes, okay? And I don't have to tell you, that Bright's group has got some fine looking ghoulettes in it. Huh? Or maybe I would have to tell you. Anyway, I helped them out. And they kept me supplied with ammo and pleasant company. I'm not delicate. Rad roach meat for protein. Condensation off the pipes for water. And I do my business over in the far corner. I wouldn't say it's been comfy. Huh. Well, you're polite. I'll give you that. If this was just between you and me, I'd do as you ask. But it's not. I had a friend with me when those mutant bastards came out of nowhere. She panicked and ran the wrong direction. Further into the basement. She's probably dead. But I ain't leaving until I know for sure. I'd have gone looking myself. Except I wouldn't last a minute out there. You, on the other hand, seem pretty resourceful. Find my friend, and I'll get out of your way. Thanks. Let me know what you find out. Here's hoping she's okay. Did you find my friend? I see. Well, spare me the details. Damn it. I'm gonna miss that crooked yellow smile. All right. You did your part, so I'll do mine. Look around up here if you want. I'm gonna make a break for topside. Is the way clear? Praise the Creator, and bless you, Wanderer. The way is clear. I will lead my flock through the basement to the sacred site. I hope you will come find us there, Wanderer. There is much to be done. I waited to speak with you one last time before I descended to the launch pad, Wanderer. I want you to know that we will remember for all eternity how you delivered us to the threshold of the Great Journey. Our preparations are nearly complete. But the rockets that will carry us to salvation are yet missing vital components. If you would still help us, Wanderer, speak to Chris. He can tell you what is missing. There is no way that we can thank you enough, Wanderer. Your arrival here was a blessing. We will remember you always. Yes. The rockets will convey us to our promised land in the far beyond. Vision upon vision has confirmed it. I understand your concerns, friend, and I thank you for voicing them. But the Creator's will for us has been made manifest. After all that you have done for us, I suppose you deserve to know everything. When Chris came to us, we tried to convince him that he was human. But this only angered him. He seemed... lost. We decided to let him stay with us for a few days, over the course of which we learned that his technical skills far surpassed our own. It became clear that the Creator had sent him to us, to ensure the success of the Great Journey. Equally clear was that Chris should labor in blessed ignorance of his humanity, and his inability to make the journey himself. It is no coincidence that two humans have been vital to the success of the Great Journey. It is my belief that the Creator sent you, and Chris, to expiate the sins of your kind against mine. Your Redeemers both. Such is the Creator's will. Vision upon vision has shown me that, were Chris to accompany us, he would die in minutes. The radiation around the launch pad alone would kill Chris in minutes. The radioactivity of the far beyond is much stronger. I take no pleasure in hiding the truth from Chris, but it is the Creator's will to which I must submit. There is no way that we can thank you enough, Wanderer. Your arrival here was a blessing. We will remember you always. Jason says that I am to cooperate with you on the final tasks necessary to launch the Great Journey. 
I'm the flock's resident engineer. I've always been good with machines. Jason says the great journey would have been impossible without me. Of course, my skills aren't much use unless I have the right materials. That's where you come in. I was close to completing work on the rockets before we were driven into hiding on the top floor. Two components were missing. A quantity of isotope 239 igniting agent, and a set of thrust control modules. The igniting agent is highly radioactive and decays quickly. That's why we can't use the drums that leak down on the launch pad. It's no longer potent enough. I need you to find an intact, shielded container of the igniting agent. As for the thrust control modules, they were custom-built for these rockets. They won't even launch without them. Very well. We don't need a huge amount. Two to three liters should be enough. Did you hear him? My god, you were right all along. I'm no ghoul. They were just... using me. And dying would be worse than this? Used up and thrown away like garbage? Oh, so I've redeemed the human race, is that it? What a crock. The human race can't stand me. So, you want me to accompany you on your adventures across the wasteland, is that it? Life among humans again? That's what you're suggesting? I guess... I guess it's the only chance I've got. Maybe it'll be different this time. I was never a saint before. I can't believe I'm agreeing to this, but I'll give it a try. You go launch the rockets. I'm on my way to Novak. We've got a situation with some great cons right now. The brass at McCarran has ordered me to lock down the ruins until it's been resolved. One of my patrols was on its way back from Novak when it came under fire from the great cons. They radioed for reinforcements, but instead of waiting for us, they chased the cons into the ruins where they were caught in a crossfire. No deaths, but not all the squad got out. The cons have Private Ackerman and Private Gilbert as hostages. Normally, I'd turn you down since I have no idea who you are. But considering that the hostages are as good as dead when we attack... All right. I'm going to give you a chance to talk to the Great Khans. Their leader is a man named Jessup. If we hear shooting, we'll be coming in. But it'll probably be too late for you. Good luck. What the hell? You're that courier Benny wasted back in Good Springs. You're supposed to be dead. Yeah, uh, about that. Don't have it. Benny stole it right before he stabbed us in the back. He's probably back at the strip by now, laughing at me. Yeah? On what? He's one of the chairmen, big shots that run the Tops Casino in New Vegas. A friend from the city contacted me with info on a big job. I should have known that the caps were too good to be true, but there was still no way I could pass up the chance. It's just a big fancy poker chip, as far as I know. Don't know why anyone would make one out of platinum, though. He's a snake, that's why. He owed us the rest of the pay for the job, so maybe he didn't want to pay up. Fine. What's to negotiate? The NCR backs off, we walk out of here, nobody gets hurt. I can't believe I'm doing this. But all right, the hostages can go. The NCR had better keep their end of the deal, though. Here, a souvenir for you. It's Benny's lighter. Shove it up his ass when you catch up with him.
Eh, uh, go on. I'm glad you were able to get my people freed, but there's a new problem. I just got orders to take out the Great Khans, hostages or not. My hands are tied. I can't go against orders, can I? You're right. The Great Khans are free to go. Fancy meeting you here, friend. Just rolling along on my spurs. Looks like I just might make it to New Vegas after all. Yep. Guess it's just down to you and Fancy Pants. I wouldn't worry about him. He looks all hat and no cattle, if you ask me. Fancy Pants? No, I ain't seen hiding a hair of him since the tussle in Good Springs. I'm sure he ran back to the soft living of New Vegas, though. Now, now, it ain't my fault that Dorothy and the Tin Man happen to be on the same yellow striped road, is it? Look me up when you get to New Vegas. I'll buy the first round. What is it? You got no right asking me that. Drop it. You don't know what you're asking. Just let it go for now. The Legion's the only thing I want on my mind right now. He was a good spotter. Yeah, we were. No. Sure. First NCR recon. It's a sniper battalion. Sees a lot of action. They moved us around a lot. I was stationed at Cam Golf for a while. Last I heard, they're at Camp McCarran. They pick you out if you do well at the firing range. Pays a little better. So I said, okay. Yeah. You could tell by the patch. Bear skull with crossed rifles behind it. Slogan underneath. The last thing you never see. Pretty accurate. And so are we. Was an airport before the war. Command liked it because it was already fortified, and it let them keep an eye on the Strip. They've got an old monorail that still runs between them, used mostly for supplies and deployment. But if you get leave, they're allowed to go gamble. It was General Oliver's post, but I heard he's been up at the dam a lot lately. Guessing Colonel Shu is running it. Didn't know him. He's a signature on my discharge papers. Wasn't real popular, though. Even overheard my CO complain about him once. General Wait and See, he called him. Yeah. He introduced himself to me once. I shook his hand. Doubt he remembered me now, though. When he looked at you, you could see he understood. After some of the things we'd seen, that meant something. But I heard he'd be a general right now if Oliver didn't know the president. The big one. The one the NCR is trying to hold on to, that the Legion's pushing for. Whole war depends on holding it. It was on the front line for a while. Only resort in New Vegas no one wanted to get sent to. Doesn't have that kind of importance anymore, though. They pulled most of the troops out of there after we took the Hoover Dam. All right. I was in a lot of places with First Recon. I don't really remember. A part of my life's over now, and so is this discussion. Okay. No, it doesn't. Okay. It's NCR land for the most part. We tamed it. Now we're settling it. A lot of people complain about it, but they forget what it was like before we showed up. It's a lot of territory to secure. Too much, even for a big army like the NCRs. Okay. Coming east was about securing the land so people could live without fear. It's not always that simple, but I think the cause is still right. And God help us if they lose. Okay. Yeah, lots of thoughts. All about the best ways to kill them. All right. 
If you want, it's not really my thing. What do you want to know? Give me a rifle and a clear line of sight, and I'll start picking them off before they've even seen me. Didn't have much hand-to-hand -hand training, so our chances are better if you keep the enemy out of my face. I'm trained as a spotter, too. If you're looking through a scope, I can find your targets for you. Sure. No. Sure. Carla's dead. That's all you need to know. Are you here to drop off medical supplies? Leave them with the rest in the middle of the courtyard. Rates of injury and illness in Freeside are very high. Supplies don't last long. Medex, Radaway, and Fixer are Freeside essentials. I can't pay you for any supplies you bring in, but I could discount the charge for our services. So far, the Crimson Caravan won't cut us a deal. If you can convince them or some other merchant to work with us, I'll discount supplies to you. You might ask around at Mick and Ralph's, or go see the Garrets, though I suspect they're too busy poisoning Freeside to help it out. Just come see me when you've got some supplies to turn in. What do you want to talk about? More than rough. It's a damn mess. Freeside townies are constantly picking fights with NCR civilians. Thugs and thieves are always looking for a victim, and the local families are just sitting back making caps on the mess. Freeside is in dire need, but no one has been man enough to step up. The followers can only do so much to stem the tide. There is always something needing done. A few souls here in Freeside could be great assets to the community if they'd kick their addictions. We need a regular supply of medicine organized, but the Crimson Caravan wants too many caps for what we need. Lastly, tensions between the townies and NCR tourists have been going downhill fast lately. A lot of innocent people will get hurt if things blow up. Yes, old Bill Ronte and Jacob Hoff. They're not going to kick their habits on their own. Old Bill Ronte is an exceptionally skilled machinist. He could fix the problems we've been having with Freeside's water pump, if he sobered up. The Garretts hooked Jacob on chems when he was working for them. Ironic, since he used to homebrew detox chems. He's a natural chemist. In Freeside, the drunks and drug addicts flock in and around the Atomic Wrangler. I'd start there. Sobering them up and putting them back to work would go a long way toward helping Freeside. What do you want to talk about? What did you want to know? Bill Ronte installed that pump a few years ago, back when he was sober. It was a major improvement for the community. But lately, the Kings have started charging locals to use it, and NCR squatters twice as much. That'll come to no good. They've been Freeside's gang for the past five years or so, ever since Mr. House and his three families pushed everyone else out of Vegas. They've done a lot of good for the community, but that seems to be changing. The flood of NCR squatters has been an affront to them. I guess that explains the situation with the water pump. Usually, the King wouldn't let his crew bully folks around like that. I know they sell a lot of guns, as if that's what Freeside needs. I hear Mick handles the guns. No idea what Ralph does. Oh, them. They sell energy weapons, which are very popular with better-heeled prospectors looking to explore the wastes. Stay clear of them. Brother and sister are both psychopaths, though at least Gloria is rational. Jean-Baptiste likes killing. A den of iniquity. The Garrets do more than their share to keep the locals drunk or high enough to stay lazy. Their thugs, on the other hand, they keep wired on chems to stay dangerous. What is it with Freeside and brother-sister psychopath teams? What did you want to know? The Old Mormon Fort serves as the regional hub for the followers of the Apocalypse. I am the administrator for this region. The followers of the Apocalypse aren't just interested in research. 
We care for our fellow man and do everything we can to help humanity. Here in Freeside, we provide food and medical services for those in need. We also have organized reconstruction efforts. With the help of Bill Ronte, we were able to install a water pump just west of here, but the Kings quickly took control of the pump. We arose from the boneyards of Adidam years ago. Since then, we have made it our mission to rebuild the wasteland and re-educate its inhabitants. We hope to forge a brave new world free of war and poverty by sharing knowledge and resources. Our primary goal is the free exchange of ideas. What do you want to talk about? The big man around here is the king. Not much happens in Freeside that he doesn't know about. He has the most influence locally, and some of his crew haven't helped the situation by harassing NCR citizens and charging double for water. Some NCR soldiers have been bringing in supplies, but none of it is going to Freeside locals. I've tried to speak to both sides to no avail. Hi. If you're looking for medical help, try the other doctors. I'm just a researcher, not even a particularly good one. Oh, you know, finding alternative treatments for common illnesses and injuries. Stim packs, out-of-barrel cacti, and other fantastic improbabilities. As far as fruitless wastes of time go, it's quite noble in its aims. I'm enthusiastic about helping people, but nihil no way soup sole. Caesar can cite Cato to suit his purpose. Many people have spoken Latin. Some of them were quite pleasant. It's unfortunate that the language is now associated with the gentleman across the river. Not from the Legion, if that's what you're getting at. Books, sheet music, gladiator movie holotapes, bits and pieces here and there. The followers have extensive libraries, but we all draw water from the same old well. Even Caesar. Ah, I don't know anything that the others couldn't tell you. Caesar was one of the followers, before my time, of course. He wanted to rebuild the new world in the image of the old. A sad story of good intentions gone bad. In that regard, he's hardly unique. If you set aside his leadership capabilities, extensive knowledge, and ruthless cunning, he's just another jerk who steps on people to get his way. Oh, sorry. There is nothing new under the sun. If Agave and Mesquite were that miraculous, the locals would have figured it out a few thousand years ago. Certainly. Not all followers are people persons. Besides, someone needs to do research. I have no problem with Julie sticking me back here. Out of sight, out of mind. There are worse things one can be, though I do admit it is a bit boring. Though it has a noble goal, I don't think this research will yield much fruit. No pun intended. No offense intended, but why should I go anywhere with you? Overt flirtation will get you everywhere, you know. On a slightly more serious note, if you're interested in helping out with the troubles plaguing Freeside, I can come with you. Just don't do anything obnoxious, like trying to help Caesar's legion, and we should be fine. Understood? All right, let's not waste any time. There are people out there to help, things to learn. Maybe not in that order, but let's get to it. You have chems, buddy? I could really use a fix. Julie's a saint, but I don't need help. I feel young and strong, as long as I get my chems. Why stop? I feel great. No worries. My guy will be here soon enough. Just wait. If I had two caps to scrape together, I'd buy the materials to make my own. My damn hands won't stop shaking. This guy named Dixon. Something about him seems sketchy, but I can't stop now. Last time I stopped, I felt like I was gonna turn inside out. At this point, I'm mostly buying his stuff just so I don't feel sick. Speaking of which, do you have any spare caps? Looking for a fix, man? I got what you need. Yeah, man. Those cats are out of their domes, addicted to my shit. They can't get enough. Pretty hilarious to watch. Really? Ah, oh, you're such a saint. You know what? I might be willing to stop, if there's something in it for me. Wait, man. You can't go around saying shit like that. Okay, I get your point. You won't have to worry about me supplying those two anymore. So you're back. Got any chems for me yet? 
What? I need a fix now. Fine. If you really care so much, then give me some shots of fixer to calm down these shakes. I'm gonna need at least ten shots to get me through the week. From there, the followers should be able to help. Never thought about using that combination before. Should be able to get through this with that. I think you're right. I've been through worse. I'll go to the fort and see if the followers can watch over me while I recover. Come on, man, I'm dying here. Julie? Uh, I love Julie. She's such a nice lady. One time I was working on the water pump, and she came over, put her hand on my shoulder, and told me I was doing a great job. <laughs> great job, she says. I just choked up and didn't say nothing. Compliments are so rare these days. Oh, Julie, I've really screwed things up. I'll head over to the fort and get some rest. This has gone on too long. Is there something you need? I saw them. Thank you so much for helping them. This means a lot to the followers of the Apocalypse. You have our thanks. If you need some medical supplies, come see me. With Jacob working with us, we should be able to spare a stim or fixer once a day. You look new to Freeside, so here's a little advice, friend. Don't go past the Southgate greeter without talking to it first. Those bots are programmed to vaporize anyone who enters the fenced-in area without authorization from the greeter. The name's Old Ben. I've been living in Freeside since the day I was born. I've done a bit of everything around here. Courier, butcher, crier, escort, gun for hire. Some of which I'm not proud of, but I do my best to help around town when needed. Exactly one of the reasons I got out of that job. Too many shifty characters looking to have someone else move their hot items. My father ran a butcher shop here in town, but business went downhill when another vendor started selling this strange meat at half our prices. You're telling me, not long after my father's shop went under and he passed away from the loss, people around town started experiencing shakes. No one gets shakes like that unless they're eating human flesh. But no one would believe me. The sick bastard gradually went insane and passed away. Wasn't long before someone moved into the guy's place and found half-buried human remains in the crawl space. I didn't bother saying, told you so. After a while, I made enough money to get a passport into Vegas. Back then, you could get approved for entry for a fraction of what it costs now. Well, I got a job working as a crier outside of the Tops, advertising for the local talent performing at the casino. That didn't last long. Well, being a suave young guy, I chatted up the ladies from time to time, and one of the manager's girls started to take a liking to me. I never touched the woman, but the jealous prick decided it was my time to go. He framed me by saying I'd stolen from the casino. Sure enough, a few grand was missing from the casino vault. I have to assume the bastard stole the funds and figured I was a convenient fall guy. Yeah, but what can you do? I was stripped of my casino apartment and all of my belongings and booted back into Freeside. From there, I didn't have a lot of career options, as my rep was destroyed. So the escort job sort of fell into my lap. No pun intended. Well, I suppose you could look at it that way, but I was packing a whole different kind of heat. No. Escort just sounds better than man whore. Yep. I was damn good at my job, too. But after a while, I just felt like a piece of meat and had to quit. When I quit the escort job, I had enough money to buy a pistol belt and some other gear. Bodyguards make a good, honest living. And I had the wits and physical build to handle most thugs. After saving a few tourists from trouble, I got a reputation for being a stand-up guy again. And after a decade, managed to save up enough to retire. Submit to a credit check, or present your passport before proceeding to the gate. Trespassers will be shot. Admission to the strip requires an official passport, or proof that you are carrying the required minimum balance. These policies prevent less reputable persons from entering, and ensure a good time will be had by all who enter the strip.
I'm sorry, but your balance does not meet the minimum balance. If you are unable to meet the minimum balance requirement, an official passport is an acceptable alternative. Please return when you have sufficient cash or passport. 